One of the largest LIDAR studies in the Maya lowlands has revealed a colossal 775 ancient sites which date to the middle and late pre-classic periods between 1000 BCE and 150 CE. The research published in the journal Ancient Mesoamerica provides evidence for the social, economic and political realities of the Mayan civilization at that time. In this video I take a look at the impressive discoveries outlined in this paper. Sorry I've been a bit quiet this past week everyone and I hope that if you celebrate festivities at this time of year that you've had a fun or relaxing time, however you prefer to spend the holiday. I wanted to put out a video just before I hosted my family for my own Christmas celebrations but on the winter solstice and the day after I ended up at the hospital for quite a few hours. It was a false alarm luckily but that set my Christmas day lunch preparations behind schedule and I ended up in a mad rush so the video didn't happen <laughs> but anyway we had a lovely Christmas day with lots of food and board games I pulled it all off in the end anyway so on to the LIDAR study the paper published this month in the journal Ancient Mesoamerica is entitled LIDAR analyses in the contiguous Mirador Calakmul Cast Basin Guatemala an introduction to new perspectives on regional early Maya socio-economic and political organization and is open access if you want to have a read. I've put the details in the description below. There's a lot of archaeological information on Mesoamerica since plenty of research has been conducted over the years and relatively new technologies such as LIDAR have begun to contribute significant amounts of data to the subject. Over the past few decades, multidisciplinary research has been carried out in the Mirador Calakmul Cast Basin by the Foundation for Anthropological Research and Environmental Studies and the Mirador Basin Project. Excavations and test trenches have been instrumental in verifying that which has been identified via LIDAR and GIS. The Mirador Calakmul Cast Basin, where the study that's the focus of this paper took place, is a fluvial landscape characterized by seasonal swamps called bajos, which contains stunted vegetation. Water drains into the basin from the surrounding hills. The paper discusses two large-scale airborne LIDAR studies that were begun in 2015 as part of the Mirador Basin project and were carried out by Eagle Mapping. They investigated the southern half of the Mirador Calakmul Cast Basin, covering a total of 1,703 square kilometers. The study revealed 775 Maya settlements in the southern part of the basin and another 189 settlements in the Karstic Ridge which surrounds it. Settlements are defined based on clusters of buildings and some of the settlements are grouped into sites because of shared infrastructure, such as causeways and reservoirs. In fact, an extensive network of causeways was discovered. Overall, the study was able to group the 964 archaeological settlements into 417 sites. Boundaries between sites are identified as uninhabited areas, such as the swamps, although there may have been a limited population in these areas as well, with wooden dwellings being built on stilts. Characterizing settlements into villages, towns or cities is difficult and has been the subject of debate amongst experts for many years. In general, archaeologists view cities as semi-urban centres which would have had between 4,000 and 5,000 inhabitants in a mix of residential and public buildings. Towns are defined as centres which housed between 1,000 and 3,000 inhabitants and had less public architecture. Villages are viewed as those areas with mostly residential buildings which would have accommodated under 1,000 inhabitants and where there was only one or no public buildings. Another difficulty in defining settlement sizes was encountered during excavations when house mounds were found. These are the remains of houses which have earthen floors, post holes and pottery but no surviving architecture. Considering all these difficulties, the authors of the study prefer to characterise the settlements in six tiers based on a number of factors. These are the surface area containing monumental buildings which are taller than 12 metres in height, 
the number of ceremonial buildings such as pyramids, the volume of structures within a civic centre, the presence of causeways within and between sites, the number of platforms for residences, the presence of ball courts, the number of reservoirs and terraced systems providing logistic support to the settlement, and the presence of defensive architecture such as moats. The research has found that the sites of Nakbe, Wakna, El Pesquero, Shulnal, El Mirador, Kunal, Yaxnoka and Balamnal dominated during the Middle Preclassic period. By the late Preclassic period, Nakbe, El Mirador, Balamnal and Tintal were the most preeminent sites in the basin. Overall, El Mirador became the most significant site with its huge platforms, pyramids, terraces and raised fields for agriculture, reservoirs and causeways. It covered a massive 132 square kilometres of the basin. Its El Tigre pyramid measures a fairly large 145 by 50 metres and is 55 metres in height. According to the author's tiered system, El Mirador belongs to tier 1. Tier 2 sites include Tintal, Balamnal and Nakbe, which cover between 13 and 19 square kilometres, so are much smaller than El Mirador. El Pesquero, Wakna, Porvenir, Yumil and Shonal were identified as Tier 2 sites with surface areas of between 2.7 and 8 square kilometres. Tier 4, Tier 5 and Tier 6 sites are not wildly different in terms of their surface area, but the presence and intensity of certain architectural features vary between them. The authors conclude that the Maya lowlands in the basin were heavily populated during the pre-classic periods with dense settlements and tremendous growth. This is contrary to the late classic period when the basin was mostly characterized by small residential settlements. There was also strong cultural similarities between the settlements across the basin in terms of architecture, pottery and art, and many of these settlements were connected by causeways. This suggests a certain amount of political, economic and social centralization. The huge number of large structures, including palaces, pyramids, dams and causeways, indicate that thousands of workers specialised in different areas of construction must have been involved in the planning and development of each settlement. Once again, this suggests a high level of centralised government. Ritual and everyday artefacts, as well as the presence of ceremonial monuments, point towards an organised religious ideology. Ceremonial complexes were labelled as e-groups in the study and have similar buildings and layouts in each settlement. They tend to consist of a pyramid in the west and a platform in the east with possible solstitial and equinoctial alignments. The Tier 1 site of El Mirador has 42 of these e-group complexes. So if El Mirador had a population of 5,000, then that's about one ceremonial complex per 100 people. A particularly interesting observation from the survey is the presence of triadic architecture, which appears suddenly in the late pre-classic period, but has no antecedents in the middle pre-classic period. Triadic architecture consists of one main structure accompanied by two smaller mounds, one on either side of it facing inwards. This architecture may be related to the cosmology referred to by scholars as the three hearthstones of Maya creation. An example of this architecture is the Pyramid of La Danta in El Mirador, which has three platforms and a triadic group of structures sitting on top of the third platform. There are 30 ball courts in total in the area surveyed, which are made up of two parallel structures, mostly on a north-south axis and measuring between 10 and 20 metres in length. The El Mirador settlement has seven structures, which the authors identify as ball courts. They are located in the area referred to as the Great Central Acropolis an extensive ceremonial sector of the site containing sunken plazas, platforms, a royal throne and hydraulic systems. The LIDAR surveys revealed 133.22 kilometres of causeways connecting sites and 38.23 kilometres of intrasite causeways. These all date to the pre-classic period and differ from classic period causeways, the latter having stone walls along their edges. 
only around 12 kilometers of classic period causeways were found in the southern basin. The LIDAR surveys also revealed a complex water management system involving reservoirs, dams and canals. So overall, the LIDAR studies, together with the archaeological excavations, reveal a substantial number of settlements in the mirador Calakmul Basin of Guatemala, many of which are connected by causeways. These settlements were characterised by large-scale architecture and infrastructure dating to the middle and late pre-classic periods. This suggests a significant amount of social, economic and political cohesion within and between settlements and also indicates a power hierarchy possibly with rulers based at the great central acropolis in El Mirador. What I find fascinating is that this sophistication and complexity was much reduced by the late classic period. I'm also impressed at the triadic architecture which became such a pervasive feature of the basin all of a sudden in the late pre-classic period. I'm very excited to see what future excavations will uncover. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button and click on that notification bell so you know when I publish a new episode. And I'll see you next time.